Hi, today I'm just going to go over a few things on a Kohler generator that I believe is critical every time you come around to do a maintenance. Besides if you're doing the spark plugs, the air filter, and the oil, you have other parts like underneath your air filter box over here. You have four bolts. You have two here and two on this side. And even this little set screw right here that loosens up over time so i believe every time i come around and do a maintenance just snug them up a little bit they may not need it they may need it but you'll be surprised at the problems that can arise from these loosening up you will actually get some on occasion some over speeds and under speeds faults because what I've had happen is this little armature on a stepper motor, if it loosens up too much, will actually spin into the wrong spot. I've had that. But then also, I've also had where this little tiny set screw, I'm not sure what's, if this is the size or not, but this little tiny set screw, the jack ladder too big, too big. Actually, I've had this loosen up on me. So I recommend just quickly it move just a tiny bit, not much, but just make sure that it's tight. Because I've had where it wouldn't engage. It would start, but it wouldn't actually set the throttle to where it has to go for the engine to correctly operate. And that's very very important to make sure that those are tight because over time just from the engine vibration I find that these bolts do loosen I'm gonna say probably three out of five generators I get into on a maintenance those bolts are just a little loose and usually you could tell you can get this to rock back and forth a little this is not really doing it here but you'll actually get a lot of play on it now for another spot we got the battery Kohler was notorious for overcharging these batteries. So, on the batteries, besides everything else that you would usually do, pull it out. You're going to want to make sure that you have the correct fluid inside. Because what happens over time on the Kohler is that it dries itself out. Like here, we have dried out cells. So, now I have to go get some fluid. But you wanna make sure that that is full. Now I'm gonna put the top back on real quick. Because of what we just ran into, I'm actually gonna disconnect and pull this battery out. So this way, it's a half inch. This way it's easier for what we have to do. Always disconnect the negative first. Now the positive. This is critical on generators with a battery that actually has liquid in it. This is to make sure that it's full of water. Now you got to use distilled water on here. Okay, so now that I've removed the battery. I'm able to work on it somewhere that I could stand up. I'm going to take these back off. Now one of the things you're going to want to do is try not to get that crap into the battery. You're going to want to clean this stuff out of here without it ending up inside your battery. Because if the battery manufacturers are requiring distilled water Obviously, 
dirt is no good for the inside of the battery. But as you can see, you could actually see the top of these cells. So we don't want that, we want to see water. So what you're going to need is a clean funnel, distilled water. I had to run out and buy it because I was out of distilled water. So I stopped the video before and I actually had to go to a store. And then you need to fill it up. I do a little bit in each cell. At first. Now we'll come back around for each cell. Okay. Now a little bit more. Okay. Pretty much so you're almost at the bottom of that plastic is what somebody taught me. I'm hoping I'm doing it right. But having water is better than having not enough because that's what shorts out these batteries. But then I also found out too much water is not good because it'll actually make this cover pop right off. The battery, the cover that snaps on in here, I've actually seen them shoot off when I put a little too much water. But right about now, it looks pretty good. Someone said you wanna see it create like an eyelet, but. And this prevents the battery from overheating and shorting out. And I mean, Kohler generators are notorious for killing the batteries. Yes, they have that little upgrade that prevents it from killing the batteries. But then they've even, for some time, sometimes they've given people problems on getting those. But now our battery is full. Snap these back on. I like to quickly just brush off my terminals. It's really not that necessary because they're pretty clean, but now let's go reinstall. Now that we're back over here by our generator, quick brush out, just make sure you got good metal so you're gonna have a good contact on the battery. What I also like to do is while the battery's out, usually I use a paintbrush, but my paintbrush is missing to sweep all this junk and garbage out. Because remember, when things break, you're working here, so on your maintenance, clean stuff up. These hoses here, oh, which are full of water, they prevent hunting. This was a recall that Kohler had. So if you have these hoses and you're seeing water in it, I actually believe it's not needed to even be going out the generator, as long as they're inside and that the generator can actually the regulate because what was happening was when this generator runs it's air cooled so it's drawing air in here and it was actually hitting the regulator not allowing it to properly maneuver and that was causing a lot of hunting because you weren't getting a good gas flow to your engine because your regulator as it's got to expel the back pressure on the back part couldn't do it because air was ramming in here and that was their fix for that issue. Okay. Now we put the battery back in. Always reconnect your positive battery post first. And be careful because if you're going to ground out, you will blow sparks. So when you're doing this, just make sure that your wrench is not gonna go against the cabinet. If you do touch that, your wrench will have a weld mark on it. OK. 
Okay, there's that one. Now the negative is always the last one back on because once you put the negative on, you're actually a part of the circuit. The negative off the battery, it's not actually grounded, it's not a part of the circuit. But of course, there's no voltage here, it's just going to ground. Okay. I like to keep these covers on it because it helps keep it a little cleaner. Okay, so the battery definitely needed maintenance on this machine. This one, my bolt holding on the stepper motor didn't loosen, but a lot of times I do find them loose. These needed to be drained, and all it pretty much is is just allowing air. It's, it, like I said, it's a vent. I don't even know if the hoses are that necessary because with a 90 on, the air shouldn't ram right in. But this was Kohler's fix. It was an SB722 or S it was some memo they gave back in 2011 after Sandy because quite a few generators were having that problem of hunting. And that was one of them. You had to check the gasket on the carburetor. You had to go through the controller. You had to change a lot of the speed controls. So, I mean, there was quite a few different things they wanted you to do. Now, here's another one to check. You want to make sure that you're riding, that your brushes are on your slip rings and you're riding evenly. And they are. Because, I mean, these, I've seen them overheat and melt or break if they're not riding evenly. At least I believe that's why they broke, was because they weren't riding evenly. Because usually they don't break. I've seen them. these generators go hundreds of hours with very little problems there. start everything by hand before I crank it in with a wrench prevent cross threading but those are the three things I feel are crucial on a Kohler RESA generator maintenance if you have other things please add it into the comment section of what you think are crucial I mean there's lots of other things to check but I find that the Three things I just showed cause the most amount of problems. One, the batteries being dry. That'll always cause problems. The second one, well actually the first one I showed was the stepper motor. More than not, that's loose on my maintenance. The battery being dry, yes. Make sure the battery's not dry because you don't want these batteries to keep dying. So always make sure you maintain the battery. And the slip ring and brushes, make sure that the brushes are riding good on the slip rings. I mean, other than that, I mean, spark plugs, air filter, oil change, they're just the basic stuff. They're the easy parts of the maintenance. See, these generators, they're not bad to work on. A lot of guys are like, oh, the maintenances are easy. Yeah, they are. But if you're maintaining them, that means you gotta be able to fix them. And they get interesting when they start to break. They do. So, just make sure that you're doing the best job you can for your customers. Because for me, where I'm working, it's me and three other guys out of the 40 techs that work on generators. So I'm gonna make sure that there are no problems here when I'm done. I don't want to be coming back because things don't work. So everything I have connected at this point, let me just start it with that. Well, till next time, and please feel free to fill in 
things that you notice are problems on the maintenance that you always like to address. Stepper motor problems, you have some, but on maintenance is not many. Till next time, I'm out. Hit like and subscribe.